All right, buddy. Are we going anywhere this week? No, we're not, actually. Uh, what we are talking about is something to do with the, the camera itself, the physical part of the camera. And what is that? It's back button focus. Back button focus, not police cars. That's right. We're going to find out what back button, back, 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 back is all about. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? And why we want to do it, how we do it, and what I'm going to do about Dylan in the future. Who knows? That's mm. right. So anyway, he's going for his first pee. soccer. What? Pee. You have to go pee? Wait for the shake. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna take him pee. So anyway, grab yourself something to eat or drink. Get yourself comfortable. Drink the Kool-Aid. Let's get it on. Here I am, Vietnam. Green is always coming down. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. And Dylan, <laughs> who's outside watching some cartoons and may or may not join us a little later. He's got his own way of uh, entering the show. And no more uh, sitting down with Dylan from the start and saying, hey, Dylan, let's do camera talk. He's like, no. Get the fuck out of here. Four years old already. Picked up daddy's habits of being a little bit of a rebel. Anyhow, what's this episode of Camera Talk all about this week? Back button focusing. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Those who have not. What the fuck is that? Well, now you have. What is back button focusing? I don't know. Well, you know what focusing is all about, right? Got your camera. Got your shutter release, you point at your subject, half press, camera focuses. Now we're talking autofocus here, right? Not range finder or old vintage uh, manual focus lenses or anything else. Talking full autofocus, half press the shutter, it focuses depending on the camera, depending on the lens, quickly, slowly, accurately. Maybe none of the above. Hey, it all day, everything depends. Uh, but anyway, traditionally, that's what it's all about. Half press, get it in focus, and then press fully, and you've got your, you've got your photo. So what's wrong with that? Well, nothing exactly wrong with it. It's just there's another way to approach this. Let's just say that. Uh, some may say it's the better way, and some may argue not. But when we talk about back button focusing, what it basically means is you're, you're um, uh, disconnecting your focus button from being on the shutter release and assigning it to one of the other buttons somewhere on the camera. Now again, this can be entirely up to you on, on how you would decide to do such a thing, but most Photographers out there, whether you're pro or amateur like me or anything else, you tend to choose buttons that are somewhere near where your fingers are already holding onto the camera, right? Uh, obviously, if you choose buttons on the other side, you're going to have to shoot two-handed uh, at all times doing this way. And it's not to say that you can't. Hey, to each their own. That's weird. But, as I said, a majority of uh, folks out there are going to choose one of the buttons somewhere near their thumb that's holding on to, uh, near the grip that you're holding on to. Now, what does all this have to really do with anything anyway, with your focus? Well, because, you know, to back up a few feet or a few meters, uh, t to talk about where the camera gets its, its focus idea from anyway is the, is, you know, the way the camera's designed 
and there's two types of autofocus that are out there. It, you either get phase detect autofocus, so uh, PDAF, ah. or you get con contrast detect ah. autofocus, CDAF. Uh, some cameras have a combination thereof using both at the same time. It really, again, depends on the manufacturer, depends on the model, depends on many different things. So anyway, how, how do they work? Well, your phase detect is basically, you know, you have your sensor that's inside the body of the camera itself. And then at the bottom, you're going to have another sensor. What the fuck? What? Another sensor? Who's, who's talking about other sensors? Well, yes, it has an autofocus sensor in there as well. So when the light comes in through the lens, it gets split. Uh, and some of that light is reflected down or deflected down into the uh, area where the autofocus sensor is. And basically the autofocus sensor compares to what's in the main sensor and they match through the autofocus mechanism in the camera. They match and match up until they're, they're equal. Uh, intensity, uh, almost like rangefinder, you know, where the where the rectangle crosses over, and then once it's lined up, you're you're good to go. Same, same, but different, but still same. So that's, you know, in a nutshell. Well, hello, Mr. Dylan. Are you coming in? To, are you coming in to see us? Oh, hold on, got to shut the door. Uh, you want to come come over here, say hi. Well, nice hairdo, mister. Puppies. <laughs> nice hairdo. The you just police. wake up from your nap or something? You get the bed head thing going police. on there. Police. Yes, it's a police car. But it's not quite what Daddy was just talking about. Daddy was talking about phase detect. So PD, but a different PD. Phase detect, police department. Oh, you're kind of almost led right into it there, right? Hmm. So anyway, um... So yeah, so it uses, it uses a comparison model between the autofocus That's sensor okay. and the main sensor. Yeah, I know it's okay. And, uh, and when it matches, it takes the picture or it, it says, okay, you're good to take the picture. You know, again, whatever system you have. Now contrast detect, um, the other element, the other side of it, um, uses an actual focus element in the, in the lens itself um, to adjust until the maximum intensity is detected. And again, that's, that's through light. So it's, it's, you know, using that contrast to figure out what that intensity is. And once it's detected, again, you take your picture. Anyway, but that's, that's how the, uh, oh, your light's falling off there. That's how the uh, autofocus systems work in our cameras. And as I said, there are models out there, uh, brands and models who use a combination of phase detect and contrast detect. Your camera may be completely different. But anyway, as I said, the, um, you know, really getting back to the back button focus thing, um, you know, it, it comes down again to... Um, you know, disconnecting the, the shutter release from doing any autofocus at all and placing that, uh, that responsibility on the, uh, on the photographer to choose a button on the back of the camera to assign as being the autofocus button. See, now that's some bullshit. Now, I'm going to use, since I have this in front of me, I'm going to use Sony as an example. And on the back, and I'm sure you can't see it from there. Can you see it from there? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying what through. You see the, these two buttons? What does that say? What does that say? AF on. AF on. All right, good for you. You can read that. What's that say? A. A. No, A. A. What, no. Letter, what no. letter is that in the middle? No, no. A. E. E. No, 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 Dylan. A. E. L. L. All right. 
Well, that was painfully slow, but... That kind of cringe level where your sphincter pucker is kind of horrible. Those are the two buttons on the back of... Uh, now, this is an A7R3, but it's, uh, you know, similar on, on most of the models like this. You have an AF on button and an AEL button. And you can assign your autofocus to either one of those. Um, I have the AF on button as my autofocus. And it even labeled that way, autofocus on. Um, and my AEL button as my, my eye autofocus. Am I still in the thumbnail? What's the difference? Well, that's another episode or something, but anyway. Um, that's, that's what I have for my back button focus. So what are the advantages of that? Well, when it comes down to, especially um, like for my taste in photography, I like portraiture, right? I like to take pictures of people. I like to get people's faces. Mostly this little guy, uh, when he's behaving himself, he makes a good little subject. I'm okay. Are you sure? I'm okay. I'm okay. And he's kind of cute and takes good pictures. So I can autofocus, or I can, again, focus using my back button. And yet I can recompose at the same time because I can lock in that, that focus with the, with the button. And... Again, just, you know, re recompose the, the, uh, the scene before I actually push the shutter release button and take the picture. Now, when you have your autofocus connected to the same button, again, if you lock your focus and then you recompose and then press, press again, you're refocusing again. Hey, honey, it's not, it's not working. See, there's a cover on the front. Duh. So, um... Yeah, it's just better for, it's better for um, that lock, lock the focus and then, and then recompose. Uh, continuous autofocus is, again, ideal. You lock, you know, you set your autofocus on the back button, press it, creates the square around the, around the face. And, Don't be a... And then he can move and it will continue to follow him around and then take the picture whenever, whenever it's appropriate. Manual override, you know, again, using the, uh, the focus ring, uh, you can easily override, um, override the, the autofocus. Because one of the problems with autofocus, as I'm sure you're all aware of, is the fact that it is not an exact science. Uh, or it's not a perfect science, I would say. No, no, I'll sit over at this side. They're blocking, blocking daddy. So many times you might take a, a photo of somebody or a, or a thing or whatnot, and there's distracting things in the background or foreground, kind of like having a Dylan in between the camera and myself. There can be slight distractions going on. What you talking about, doctor? Uh huh. And the autofocus may lock on to something like his police car instead of instead of police. me. And you can override that, of course, with your manual uh, focus, you know, using the, uh, the focus uh, ring itself. So, um, that's, you know, that's the, and the same with a, a busy environment, like just, not just the fact that police. Dylan's on the side being distracting. Police. But let's say you're at a sporting event um, and you're at a football game and you're trying to focus, you're trying to focus on a single player. And of course, there's, a dozen other guys running around in front of them, behind them, beside them, and everything else. And the autofocus is going to obviously get distracted and may likely choose another subject besides the one you're trying to focus on. And therefore, um, you know, it's, it's again the advantage of that manual focus override is being able to get in there. And, Make sure, but the continuous focus is again something that's going to benefit in, in that regard. So, some of the benefits of these this technique the back button, sports, wildlife, as I said, street photography, um, obviously, portraiture, as I just said, you can lock into the eye, as I said, the you know, having the uh, that uh, 
AEL button for me, having the, having the eye autofocus. I can lock in to Dylan's eye, so therefore if he's kind of moving around a little bit, it, it, it still locks into his eye. And, and then I can take the picture at the right moment. Low light is another issue, you know, autofocus has never done well in, in low light. And uh, again, back button focus is good for, the, for that as well, because, you know, again, you can, you can hit the button a few times to get it locked in. And if it still ends up, especially if it's uh, contrast detect, it'll have that hunt where it's hunting for the, for the focus. Use your manual override and, and basically tell it where you want to. Uh, where you want to. Yeah, Mango Bug. It's the name of his latest cartoon craze. Mango bug. But anyway, bet, 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 um, bet, bet. other than that, remember that bet, you're the one who set this up, so you can bet, easily undo bet, it if it's not for you, because it isn't for everybody. Bet, there are some bet, who who like that, bet, you know, the default. I think I hate it. Is how everything's bet, done through the shutter bet, shutter bet, release bye. button. Now on your on your uh, Sony. If you go into the menu, if you, you know, if you want to set it up, uh, each, you know, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, everybody has their own way to do this. Um, but since I'm, I have my Sony out here, um, you go into the menu, camera number two, you know, again, looking at it from your way, it would be not only the first camera, but the second camera. Ah. Find the custom key, I think it's like on page eight or nine or something like that. Ah. Click on that and then find the AF on button or the AEL button, whichever one you want to use personally. Ah. And click on that, assigned to um, be your autofocus, you know, is, is, is what it is. And make sure it's also continuous. Um, AFC. Ah. Oh. Uh, continuous autofocus. And uh, and again, you'll it'll take some practice. Obviously, you have to get that muscle memory in there, realizing you have to use your thumb for the focus and not your not your pointer finger, and so forth. But once you get the hang of it, once you've practiced, once you really get to know the benefit, you feel the benefits of it, um, you may find it's tough to go back. And, uh, hey, to each their own, right? So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about this week was a little back button focus, how to do it and why you want to do it, um, and setting it up in, in, your, in your camera. So anyway, that's all we've got for you this week. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, or anything else, go ahead and drop a drop a comment in the uh, in the comment field below and um, other than that about uh, we give our little plug for our photo editing software that we use I recommend everybody use some kind of editing because it does make a huge difference in your uh, the outcome of your, your photos so who do we use well who do I use I use Luminar Luminar Neo uh, of course, I still have one of their old programs, Luminar AI, on my laptop, but, uh, but they just released something recently to say that I can now have extra, because I already bought the copy for life, I can use them uh, to put on other devices, so I may just upgrade that laptop to also have Neo. And what's the benefit of Neo? Well, it's got all kinds of AI. And what is AI? E O. E O L. What does that stand for? E Q. <laughs> well, now you're just gonna go off the rails on me here, right? AI. Tell us what AI means. Are you ready? One, two, three. E O. No, that's not what it means, right out. E artificial intelligence. Kiki. That's right. Kiki. And why do we like artificial Kiki. intelligence? Because it helps us think artificial helps to speed up things something like uh spot and dust removal right for uh using our scenario we're down at the beach dylan's 
pointed out some hot babes, and Daddy's Daddy, like, yeah, Daddy. let's get some photos of those hot babes. And I take those pictures, and we get home, and Daddy pulls them up on the monitor, and, uh, and I see the spots all over the monitor. What the hell are those spots? I had a dirty sensor. So they're mixed in with all the seagulls, right? And they're mixed in with all the seagulls. All right, so you're leaving. Bye-bye. Oh, thank God. All right, so that's one less distraction going on, so he's out of here. Hey, screw you! Um, so anyway, those seagulls. You don't want to leave the seagulls alone, right? And if you click on spot and dust removal, it will analyze the photo and it'll recognize the difference between those spots and the flock of seagulls. No, the other seagulls. And it'll remove the spots for you without you having to, you know, hit the erase button and get rid of all the spots yourself. So that's pretty cool. Power line removal is another one. You might have a photo, you know, some great architecture of a, you know, 2,000 year old temple of something or other, and all of a sudden you're noticing all these power lines everywhere. Well, that tends to ruin your photo, doesn't it? <laughs> Click on power line removal and it'll again analyze the photo, recognize those power lines, and remove them for you. How cool is that? Hmm. It has background removal, it has scene relighting, you know, if you want to change the lighting from this side over to this side, you know, it's not like a spotlight or anything, but it's a subtle shift of, of light. Um, you know, it has things like super sharp and, and you know, if you want to extend the, your, your photo, if it's too narrow, you want to extend it out, it can recreate the, you know, the landscape or whatever is onto the side and for you it's pretty pretty cool uh little bit of software anyway but other than that um it's also economical you know it's cheaper than lightroom and photoshop and a lot of these other ones that are out there cheap bastard not to bag on those guys but you know it is kind of cheaper and uh it's a one-stop shop it's, it's it's all the only ones that i use uh Luminar. And anyway, if you want a discount, you want to buy yourself a copy, click on the link in the description below. It'll take you to Skylum, who's the, uh, the manufacturer, or the producer of this software. And they're in Ukraine. Everybody knows what's going on there. So <laughs> it benefits them in that regard as well. And um, it'll take $10 off your purchase. Hmm, that's not bad. Hey, who can't save 10 bucks, right? And what do they do with that $10? Talk, talk it up, man. Well, they, they give it to us because we're the ones who, well, say we, Dylan's not here anymore. I know he's here in spirit. Mm hmm. But, uh, and he may come back in any second, who knows? <laughs> but anyway, it's. Uh, it's, it's good bang for the buck. And um, anyway, so let's move on. Get yourself a copy. Um, who are we? Well, I'm Dr. Scott. He's Dylan. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. This is Spot! And together we're all modesty photography. We're here to talk about tips and tricks about photography. Lenses and cameras and vintage stuff. I have many, many vintage lenses up here. Um, you know, manual systems, autofocus systems, full frame, giant 42 megapixel, 24 megapixel, micro four thirds. I've got APS-C cameras. We got it all. We talk about everything. Anyway, what else can you do to support us? Well, you can subscribe. That's right. Subscribe. And if you didn't get those two as a hint hint subscribe that's right it helps us out right helps us to get exposed <gasps> uh, 
out there on YouTube. And what else does YouTube like besides exposure? It likes the thumbs up, right? So if you give us a thumbs up, we'll give you a little taste of Dylan's girlfriend, the Thumbs Up Girls. Usually he's here to sing along with me, but thumbs up. Do 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 thumbs up. Okay, other than that, I think that was pretty much it. Thank you for dropping by. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for buying a copy of Luminar through our link. Thank you for all the considerations out there in the world. World peace and solving hunger and sustainability and saving the world and our planet. And saving our future political disruptions coming any day now. My memory is fine. I don't care. Anyway, so thank you all together. Now, who are we? Oh, I told you. It's Modesty Photography. And what is this? This was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and Dylan. <laughs> And just remember, we release one of these, it used to be every Friday, but now it seems to be kind of whenever Friday I have available to do these things. I tend to be getting busier all the time. Whatever. Without more pay, something wrong with that math. But anyway, um, we get them out whenever we can. But that's Friday, Vietnam time. So it could be the day before you, it could be the day after you, or it could be the same day as you depending on your funky time warp. So anyway, thank you again for dropping by and we will see you when we see you. All right, bye-bye. Here I am, VNA.